How InterVLAN routing works in VXLAN network. In the last section, with the title How VXLAN Data Plane Works, we have shown how two nodes in the same VLAN communicate with each other in VXLAN network. In this section, we discuss how InterVLAN routing differs on a VXLAN network from a native Ethernet network and how Layer 3 VNI help us to do InterVLAN routing in VXLAN network. In the topology, we have a VXLAN network with two leaf uh, switches, server 1 with MAC X and IPX connected to leaf 1 switch and it is configured in VLAN 140. VLAN 140 is mapped to VNI uh, 50140 in leaf 1 switch. Another server with MAC Y and IPY is connected to leaf 2 switch and it is in VLAN 141. VLAN 141 is mapped to VNI 50141 in leaf 2 switch. These two servers in different VLAN want to communicate to each other. So in this topology, we want to see how InterVLAN routing works in VXLAN network. At first, I want to do InterVLAN routing on a VXLAN network like a native Ethernet network. However, it's not what has actually been implemented and supported by Cisco devices. This method is called asymmetric routing. But in the second method, we will do InterVLAN routing with the help of layer 3 VNI in VXLAN network, what has actually been implemented and supported by Cisco devices. The second method is called symmetric routing, which has actually been implemented and supported by Cisco devices. As you know, MAC and IP are advertised through MPBGP EVPN route type 2. So leaf 1 and leaf 2 switches know exactly where each server is located in the network. For example, leaf 1 knows that MAC Y or IPY with layer 2 VNI 50141 is behind leaf 2 switch with VTAB address V2. Notice that layer 3 VNI is not shown here because intervillian routing with asymmetric routing method does not need layer 3 VNI to forward traffic. However, in reality, layer 3 VNI is also advertised in route type 2 and we will learn intervillian routing with layer 3 VNI in the next method. If we now assume that server 1 with source X send traffic to server 2 with destination Y, with source IPX and destination IPY, the traffic will be forwarded to any cast gateway of server 1, uh, which is located in leaf 1 switch. Leaf 1 search is forwarding table and it knows that Y is in different VNI and behind leaf 2 switch with V2 as VTAP address. So the original packet which is in VNI uh, 50140 is encapsulated in another VNI in destination VNI 50141 and with the source V1 VTAP address of leaf 1 and destination V2 with the address of leaf 2. So the traffic from VNI uh, 50140 is routed to VNI uh, 50141 as it is in native Ethernet network. Reverse traffic from VLAN 141 with source Y and destination X is routed in leaf 2 from VNI uh, VNI uh, 50141 to VNI uh, 50140. So the reverse traffic will be forwarded in VNI 50140 because it's the destination VNI. 
As you can see, send traffic is forwarded with VNI 50141, which is the VNI number of the destination, Y. And the reverse traffic is VNI 5140 on the VXLAN network, which is the VNI of destination for the reverse traffic. So, send and reverse traffic can be routed on different paths, which is not good in a network environment. Since many services like firewall are not so easy to configure with asymmetric traffic. Assume the same topology again, but this time layer 3 VNI is also configured in NIF switches. Layer 3 VNI is configured per tenant. This means that all VLANs and VNIs in the same VRF or tenant have an identical layer 3 VNI that is used for inter-VLAN routing. Layer 3 VNI 50,000 is configured in VRF here. In the MPBGP EVPN route type 2, layer 3 VNI is also advertised in addition to layer 2 VNI. So each leaf 1 knows, for example, that destination Y can be reached via leaf 2 with, with an address of V2 with layer 2 VNI 50141 and layer 3 VNI 50,000. When a switch receives a traffic which destination is in another VNI, traffic is always forwarded with layer 3 VNI. In our topology, in our topology, server 1 send traffic with source X and destination Y. Leaf 1 receive the traffic in VLAN 140 or layer 2 VNI 5140, but the destination is in VNI 5141. Leaf 1 therefore encapsulate the original packet in layer 3 VNI or VNI 50000 with source V1 with the address of leaf 1 and destination V2 with the address of leaf 2. So interval and routing traffic is forwarded in layer 3 VNI in VXLAN network always, which is here 50,000. Reverse traffic is also forwarded uh, in layer 3 VNI 50,000 since the source is in layer 2 VNI 5141 and destination is in another uh, VNI 5140. So leave 2 switch forward traffic in layer 3 VNI yeah, which is 50,000 in our VRF. In summary, all inter VLAN routing traffic is always forwarded in layer 3 VNI. This method is also known as symmetric routing and what is actually implemented and it is supported by Cisco devices.